All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your four wives and your 60 kids. And if you are not a Muhammadan yet, get ready. We will make you convert to the Shin of Allah. And today we will show you why the Quran is sent from Allah, not from Shaitan. Now we have a clear evidence that Quran sent from Allah. If you don't believe me, well, you don't believe me. But you better do. I will tell you why. Because, Christian Prince, first of all, let me talk and I will explain to them you, you, what you will do. I'm just telling them, just wait, I'm, I'm preparing for you. Don't waste my time. I'm Dr. Duncan Naik and I'm sexy and you know it. Okay, Zakir, go ahead. Sorry, man. I thought I'm helping or something. All right. Listen, Prince, first of all, you know I can do a better job than you. you. You can do a better job than me? Okay. I'm not going to question what does that mean. Uh, but we are listening. Go ahead. I thank you for the word that the purpose of life which is given today. And you have given the surahs and the ayat from the Quran. Surah 1788 says, if all mankind and the jinn would come together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce it. But History of Al Tabari, Volume 6, page 107, Ibn Shahad, Kitab Al Tabkat, Al Kabir, Volume 1, parts 1 and 2, pages 236 and 239, Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, page number 165-167 says that Muhammad was inspired by the Satan and spoken on behalf of three gods, goddess, Allahat, al uza and Mannat, saying that their in intercession is hoped for. After some time later upon receiving further revelation from angel Jabril, that those verses were not from Allah, but inspired by Satan. My question is, this incident has several implications. The challenges of the Quran to bring the surah like it in Surah 1788 was actually met by those satanic words in Muhammad's own time, right? Which is turn leads to the conclusion that the rest of the Quran is this from Allah either? Uh, Brother, what's your name? I'm Danny, I'm a student. I'm studying on the book. Brother Danny has asked a very good question. Yes, sir that he called Sitar, take a note this is very good question this is a very good question but later you will see he gets angry from him from a very good question <laughs> okay give us a very good answer put it surah isra chapter 17 verse number 88 that says that if all the men's engines got together to produce the lack of the quran they will not be able to do it that's also repeated in surah tur chapter number 52 verse number 34 just to help you out. And I'll give you more references. But he said, quoting Tabri and etc., that this verse of the Quran was from Satan. Maybe you read it wrong. It was an allegation that people said these words of the Quran are from Satan and immediately the revelation came of Surah Waqiyah, chapter 56, verse number 77, 80, saying that this book is well preserved who none shall touch except those who are pure. A book well guarded by the Lord of the worlds. This verse came to say that no one be able to touch the Quran in Lohe Mehfuz, in tablet well preserved, except the mutahareen, <laughs> that is the pure angels, <laughs> indicating that the Satans can come close nowhere to the Quran. So this was the allegation laid by the mushriks of Makkah on the Prophet that this is a Satan handiwork. In reply to this, there are various verses. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 82, Quran says, Afala yatadabburun al Quran, walau kana min indi gairillah, love jadu fik tilaf and kafira. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'm going to prove to you that my book, Deception of Allah, is given to me from Allah. What is a proof? My book. <laughs> <laughs> My
My book says this is from Allah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, by the way, I'm going to open my Skype. So if there is any Muslim want to prove to me that my book is not sent for Allah, please feel free. I would love to talk to you. You know, have you ever heard of somebody giving a proof and then he give the proof from his book that this book from Allah and then because he is supposedly smart, he said, this is the allegation of the kuffar. <laughs> potato. <laughs> no, potato. I mean, when you lie, try to, I mean, learn, learn how to lie. Now, come on. This is not allegation from the kuffar. This is what you must have said. Let me uh, open... Uh, the allegation from the kuffar. <laughs> it's allegation from who? Are you sure? Yes, brother, yes. This is the kuffar, brother. The kuffar, they say that. There is no way the Muslim, they will say, this is a book inspired from Satan. Let us see. <clears throat> Again, my Skype is open. If there's any Muhammadan would like to join us, please feel free. This is the book of At Tabari, and this is the interpretation of the chapter of Al Hajj, verse number 32. Now we have it in front of us in Arabic, but no problem. Don't worry. Prophet Gogol, peace be upon him, he will do immediate translation using the magic of Allah, which is nobody can do save Gogol. In this verse, speaking about Muhammad receiving satanic verses, and all of us we knew, uh, an author long time ago, maybe before many of you was born, he wrote a book, it's called The Satanic Verses. And The Satanic Verses is not really a big deal book. But the Muslims, as usual, they hate you if you read for them what is written in their book. If you read, and I will give you the link for this website here, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And you will see that the one is making such an allegation that Muhammad received satanic verses is the Muslims. And the one who is reporting it is the Muslims. If we read here, you will see it says, from, from, from all those are Muslim, they are, they are the companion of Muhammad. They are the companion of Muhammad. Those are not kuffar. And I will use Google translation soon, you know, just to go through for those who speak Arabic. And you will see the story reported by many companion of Muhammad, who they are Muslims. In fact, uh, it says here, that when the uh, the immigrant, the Muslim who immigrated to the land of Ethiopia, that all the people of Mecca, they became Muslims. Why, what made them think they are become Muslims? What, what, what made them? Because Muhammad, he bore down to the gods, the three gods, or the three goddess, Allah, Al Uzza, and Manat. And then when they find out what happened, they left Islam. And we see here, Haddathana ibn Hamid, Haddathana Sana Salama, Haddathana ibn Ishaq, an, 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 all of those are Muslims. So do you see how this potato, uh, the Quran, and Yuka, lie no dignity whatsoever you will see the names of those who they are reporting and nowhere it says that that disbelievers they said none of those names 
are disbelievers. Those are the companion of Muhammad. Do you see them? This is why it says it from the authority. Do you see the word authority? Do you see the word authority? When a Muslim, he say from the authority, that means those people, they have authority as Muslims. They are not only just Muslims, they have authority. So the Muhammadan, like Zakir Naik, when they lie, their lie is bigger than, I cannot say bigger than Muhammad private part because that is so small. It took him, you know, I mean, he married 13 women, yet he could not make any women she have a baby. And he claimed that he used to imagine himself having sex, but in fact, he did not. So obviously he have none. It was just imaginary. But as you see, Satan he throw Quran in the words of Muhammad. And then Muhammad, he recite, and even the people of Quraysh, They agreed that Muhammad, he never spoke good about our gods as today. They like it. They love it. Not only that, all of them, they bow down, all of them together, they bow down, and Muhammad, he bow down with them. You ask yourself, what is the religion was making Muslims and pagans both agree to bow down to that God? You know what I mean? And then you will see here it says, then the messenger of Allah said, Said, listen carefully, I fabricated against God and I said about God what he did not say. Who said that? Muhammad himself. Do you see how easy to get those potatoes busted? I fabricated, Muhammad saying, I fabricated, I made Quran, Allah did not give me, and read the verse before it says, when he reaches two words, said that Satan threw at him, he said, I did not bring you this to, then the mission of Allah said, I fabricated against God, and I said about God what he did not say. Then you need to ask yourself, as long the Muslims, and this is At-Tabari, and Zakir Naik got busted with his lies, agree that Muhammad, he fabricated. And now Muhammad, because he got busted, people, they started questioning what he is doing. If nobody questioned, whatever Muhammad, he said, will keep going. Nobody will notice. But now because he got busted, he admitted that he fabricated. And then this coward, the Quran Ayuka, saying, this is, was the accusation of the non-believers. And then Muhammad actually in the prayer, he did uh, ask for the intercession of the three goddesses, the three women. And this is why there is a person, his name is Al-Walid. If you go here up, Al-Walid ibn al -Mughira. he raised dust on his forehead and prostrated on it. And he was an old man who was unable to prostrate. And here you notice that the pagan Arab and the Muhammadan, they pray the same way. Do you notice? 
Muhammad praying the same as the pagan Arab. This is how they pray. The translation in front of you is not really too much accurate. It says in Arabic, and they, those people who they bow down with Muhammad, who they are not Muslims, they were totally pleased by what he said. And they said, we know that Allah, he give life and death. And he is the one who create and he provide. But these gods of ours intercede for us with him. And that's what Muhammad did. They were asking him. You see, Muhammad, he did not declaim shaitan. He put it. He did it in purpose. They were asking Muhammad to pray to their goddess. Telling him, will we believe in Allah? So Allah is a pagan God from the beginning. But not Allah alone. The three goddess, the female goddess, those are the goddess who intercede for us with him. And because now you made a portion for them, we are with you. <laughs> Do you see it? So this is was delivery or delivered statement made by Muhammad to make those people pray with him and bow down with him and make them think that Muhammad is a prophet, but he believe in the three goddess. Muhammad, because he's a fraud, he never thought that this will be a big story between all the Arab. Muhammad now worshiping the three daughters of Allah. And now Muhammad, he want to clean his ass from the garbage he did. So then he said that, oh, this is shaitan, he throw it in my mouth. However, that will not save him still. Because how you say to me, Allah, he preserved the Quran. And we just heard Zach and Nag saying, nobody can get close to the Quran. I mean, shaitan is making Quran. And even your prophet did not even notice that this is not Quran. You see, if no one can make Quran like the Quran of Allah, who is the one is going to, ex if I make Quran right now, who is the best to examine the Quran I'm going to make? If there's a best, um, more, better than Muhammad, the Muslim, they will say no. Okay, here we go. Muhammad received satanic verses. If you say to me that Allah later, he took it off, that is even more horrible. First of all, what is the proof that the verse that Allah, he take off whatever shaitan he throw in Muhammad's mouth, is it from Allah? As long as shaitan he can give Muhammad once, that means he can give him always. Do you understand guys what I'm saying? If shaitan he can make Quran and give it to Muhammad, and as you see, this is not the disbeliever saying that. If you remember when I talked to Mimi Hijab, the coward son of Muta, he hung up on me. He said, this is not, uh, you know, this is a weak hadith. This is not, doesn't say Ibn uh, Kathir, you know. As you see, this is not weak. There's many reporters. And the Quran confirm it. And then the coward hung up on me. Shaitan he threw. Look how many times it's repeated in the same page. If I now search Satan throw, how many times I will say I will see Muslims saying that in the same page seven times? Read with me. This is number one. And this is Allah confirming. This is a verse from the Quran. 
This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. This is number five. This is number six. This is number seven. None of them reported by non-Muslims. In fact, it is Jibreel even saying that. Jibreel, he came to Muhammad and he said, you said something I did not give to you from Allah. And then he said to him, then Allah will remove what Satan, Satan throw in the tongue of his prophet. So it's already confirmed even by them and their Jibreel. And this is the link in Arabic. You can open it with Google Browser. All right? Because if you want to use Google Translation, you have to use Google Browser, as you know. So do you see how they lie? And when this gentleman who is speaking to Zakur on a yuka, he wanted to make a comment that you are lying. Zakir Naik, he shouted at him. He says, this is not a time for a debate. You ask your question, brother, let me answer you. So it's confirmed from their books and we can open any other interpretation. Even the Quran translation saying that clearly that Allah will abolish whatever shaitan he throw into the mouth of Muhammad. If there is nothing there, if there is no corruption, Allah will abolish what? Are you with me? There is no need to abolish something that is not there. If there is no corruption, there is no need to do cleaning. If there is no dirt, there is no need to, to do wash the dishes. Are you with me? Before I stop. I mean, those people, they have no you know, integrity. They have no dignity. And look how many Muslims are sitting. Did you see any one of the Muslims saying, uh, respond to Zakir Naik lying? Nobody. They knew he's lying. But because Muslims, they support liars. Islam without lies dies. And as you see, we are showing you, I just paused for you, the official government website of Saudi Arabia. And this is the book of Al Tabari. In the same time, the most stupid challenge is to write a book like my book. Go ahead. Who can write book like my book, Deception of Allah? or Quran and science and depth, or sex and Allah, very number one, very number two. Who can? Nobody. Because if you make a book like mine, you are copying me. <laughs> Same time, the Quran and Yuka, he said, if this is a book made by other than Allah, you will find in it a contradiction. Who is a Muslim? He is willing to call me, and we will go over few or unlimited number of serious contradiction in the Quran. Who is the brave Muhammadan? He is willing to call me. You see, in the Quran, your God Allah confirmed shaitan giving Muhammad satanic verses. Wonderful. At Tabari confirmed Muhammad praying and bowing down with the pagans. Wonderful. Praying to the three goddess, the women goddess. Amazing, beautiful. Women are beautiful, man. And Muhammad, he could not hesitate to ask them to intercede. I think those women, they were wearing high heels. That will make them so close to Allah. Just think about it. And then, Allah, he said, Brother Tatar, is it the book made by Allah? If you will find it, Allah, contradiction. Are you serious? Quran. Do they not consider the Quran with K? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there'd have been many contradictions. Unlimited contradiction. Who wanna call me? Who is the brave Muhammad and would like to call me? 
unlimited contradiction not one not two not a three not four not five not 10 not 20 not 60 not 80 not 90 not 100 who wanna call me hmm? and you know the funny is I, I I can say now if my book deception of Allah is not given to me from Allah you will find a lot of contradiction in it <laughs> I mean, you're stupid. You are saying to me, you are so stupid to the point you write a book of your own and you contradict your own. And this is exactly what happened. A person with a standard IQ, he will not contradict himself. But Muhammad is a person who have no IQ at all. And when this person, he want to make a comment about what Zakir Naik said, Zakir Naik, he starts shouting at him. Besides this, please let me reply, brother. Besides this, what you mentioned, Allah gives a challenge that if you say it from Satan, in Surah Tur, chapter 52, verse number 34, and Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 18, that if all the men and the jinns got together, they would not be able to produce a lack of the Quran. Let us stop here. If the men and the jinn, they met together, they cannot produce a chapter? <laughs> In the Quran, there's a chapter, it's called the chapter of the genie. <laughs> Who is talking there, the genie? So how you say to us, if the genie and the human being, they met together, they cannot, brother. Listen to me carefully. They cannot, brother, make wrong like it. Okay. Will open for me any chapter. You will see the ant making Quran, the genie making Quran, Isa making Quran, Maryam making Quran, Zechariah making Quran, even the bird, the hoop of the chicken making Quran. Let us see together. <clears throat> oh boy. Read with me carefully. And we have appointed for every prophet enemies. I, okay, it turned to be, I mean, Allah, he challenged genie, but they are working for him. How you appoint them, how you appoint shaitan to be the enemy of the prophet, and you are supposedly in the side of the prophet against shaitan. Shaitan, they work for Allah, as you say, he is the one who appoint them. He say, shaitan, you go after Muhammad, okay? You, you go after Isa. And you, you go after Musa's. What is this? And then, shayateen from among the devils, from the mankind and the jinn. There's shayateen, they are mankind. Another dumb story. Because shaitan is a genie. There's no shaitan from mankind. And read carefully what it says. Inspiring one another with adorned speech. Allah calling the speech of shaitan a beautiful speech. Very nice, decorated, eloquent language. Who doing that? Satan's. This adorned speech as delusion. But by the way, it doesn't say delusion there. It says they are proud. Let us change the translator. Just to show you how Quran changed. The man who is translating the Quran. This was Hilali Khan, right? Yeah, Hilali Khan. Let us say to another idiot. Uh, Big talk.
We need kind of funny. The devil of humankind and jinn inspire one another plausible discord through will. And uh, no, those words are weird for me. I don't know what those weird really in English mean too much, so I cannot make a comment about how uh, how accurate it is. What the plausible mean? I'm not sure. Does it mean very eloquent? It should come as an eloquent. Something so beautiful. Let us use Google translation meaning. Uh, plausible. Plausible. Okay. Of an argument statement. Uh huh. Reasonable, reasonable or parable. Okay. A person skilled in production. Oh, so you see, it's a skilled argument. Allah. Is praising the genius of the skilled argument, the language they use. Let us use different translator. Another idiot. Devils among the human and the jinn who inspire each other with the flashy words. The Quran are proud about the flashy Quran. The Quran saying that shaitan have a flashy words. <laughs> Do you see it? <laughs> Isn't it the whole point is to say nobody can make this Quran because this Quran is a flashy Quran? Are you with me? And then we find that Allah himself saying that shaitan he have and the, those shayateen they make a flashy uh, books to deceive people so if we read this carefully the one who make a flashy language is shaitan do we agree isn't this what the verse is saying do you, guys do you understand what i'm saying if the one who make a flashy language to fool people is shaitan so if the Quran is a flashy language, that means it's from Quran, from Shaitan. This is alone is a clear contradiction because on one hand you say, can you make a flashy Quran like my flashy Quran? And then you say to me that the genie they are making a flashy Quran to deceive people. We did not even open the Quran yet. This book is full of poopoo. If you read the verse before it, the Quran in Yuka, he says, The Quran said, if this is the book from the Allah, you will find contradiction. Look, he said in the Quran, even if we had sent down the angels to them, and the dead had spoken to them, and we had gathered before them all things, manifestly, they would still not believe. But later they convert to Islam. And look what it says, unless Allah wished, so it was the wish of Allah to believe or not. <laughs> yes. So guys, <laughs> listen, listen carefully, brother. Even if we send them uh, the angel, and uh, like uh, I, will, I will name for you an American angel, like Nancy Bellusi. Nancy Bellusi, she went to the, to the wedding of the king of uh, Jordan's son. He is a scumbag, and she is a scumbag, and they are in the bed together. Not literally, for sure she is. I mean, she's scary. You know, thank God I didn't hear her voice. There's, there's some people, their voice is so irritating for me. Uh, Obama and the Nancy Balusi. And who is the other one? Who is the other one? Hold on. There is a one person. I forgot his name. Uh, yeah, this one is Republican. Uh, his name is Shabiro. Unbelievable. This guy, you give me a headache if you speak to two seconds. He speak in the speed of light. <laughs> and his voice is so annoying. So unless Allah wished. So the whole point is, if somebody believe or not, it will happen only if Allah wished. 
So why Christian prince, he don't believe? Because Allah did not wish it. <laughs> and you said to me, so Allah will condemn the disbelievers. Allah will punish the disbelievers. And then you are saying to me, but most of them, they are ignorant. You just said you stupid. Allah did not wish. Who is the ignorant? No, really, that way. this is a, you know, this guy is just uh, taking too much hormone of females. Uh, Allah will fix him. I mean, we did not even read the book yet. We are just going through. No, don't mention Cortez. You know, Cortez is just, is different level. This woman, she is coming from the Maristan, which is the hospital for the crazy. All those Democrats are crazy. By the way, Allah, do you know what is what is a woman? I don't know if you can make a verse to add to the Quran because Democrat until now, they do not know what is a woman. I'm serious. In the year 2023, they do not know what is a woman. What is a woman? Let me guess. Somebody wear a skirt. Yes, 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 you are getting close. Hey, are you, are you, are you what's, what's wrong with your voice? So the Quran is a book which nobody can make like it. And listen carefully, brother. If we send them angel down, okay, try it, send the angel down. If we make the dead to speak to them, well, try it, make the dead to speak to them. And if we gather before them all things manifestly, they would still not believe. Later, all of them, they believe. Later, all those people who Allah is saying they will not believe, they believed. All of them, they converted to Islam. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, she asked Raghib Alama to sing a Hussein. You know, the funny is that this king of Jordan is a bankrupt. I mean, this guy, he can't even afford to pay for their hotel. His country is bankrupt. His budget is bankrupt. I want to know all those royal dog club, they went there for what reason? Nobody knows. You tell me. I think they just meet together so they can make business deals. Corrupt people. The dogs club. They call themselves royals. Anyway, we go back to the topic. So how Allah saying, even if we do this and we do this and we do this, they will not believe. And later they converted to Islam, all of them. You just made a promise saying, Listen, because it says, unless Allah wish. So, but Allah said at the end, it says, but most of them are ignorant. Most. So he cannot do any miracle. And the verse after it, if you notice, if you, you need to connect the two verses, you will see that those people who they are, don't want to believe, are appointed by Allah. Do you see the connection between them? Are you following with me? Who is the one who appointed and who is appointed? By who? Read with me carefully. The first group which don't want to believe. Do you see it? This verse, number 111. Appointed by Allah. Against who? Against his prophet. So how they are ignorant and how they are bad and how they will not convert unless, unless Allah wished and how they are appointed by Allah to be the enemy of Muhammad. So who is the bad? Are you following with me? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? How they are the enemy of Allah and the enemy of Muhammad and they are ignorant and shaitan, he deceived them and later he say that I appointed them.
Do you see how it's cheaper this book? Do we have any Muhammadan here have any comment about the lies of Zakir Naik? You know, you can download the video, you can call it Zakir Naik got busted, whatever you want to call it. But please show respect to Allah. We can show you in this contradiction. If we ask any Muslim right now, which one Allah created first, the mountains or the stars? Just tell me, who, who want to give me the answer? All those YouTube channels who want to call me and give me the answer, mountains or the stars, very simple. Hmm? Any Muhammadan? Mayday, Mayday. How do you do? Shame on Muhammad, shame on you. The Quran, all of it is a book of contradiction from the first page to the last page. By the way, when we say first page, which page is that? The Muslim even, they say that the Quran, brother, is preserved, right? You ask them what verse Allah gave Muhammad first, they will say to you, the verse when the angel, he squeezed him, the mayonnaise verse. Okay, where we can find it in chapter 96? Like, how in the world, the first thing Allah, he gave Muhammad, become at the end of the book. And yet they say to us that they did not corrupt the book. If Allah gave it to him, the first one, who are you to put it at the end of the book? Hmm? This is remind me of the Middle Eastern who do not know our English. My son, they have a picture of him, an article about him in his university in the first page of the book. But uh, that was the last page in the book. Those Arab, they forgot that in Arabic we open the book from the right. In English, we do, you know, we do the opposite. Do we have any Muhammadan? Did Allah allow you to change the location of verses and chapters in the Quran? Did Allah tell you science? Did Allah or do Allah know who what and he what he created first and what he created last? Who wanna call me and tell me? Hmm? Any Muhammadan? May Allah forgive them. Yeah, actually, uh, thank you, Muhammad. I don't know if you are a Muslim. Uh, Muhammad saying, May Allah forgive them. I don't know if he's a Muslim. I'm assuming he is. Uh, my friend Muhammad, listen. You can say, may Allah forgive them. But can Allah say, may Allah forgive you? <laughs> what do you think? I understand if you say, may Allah for forgive them. But I never heard of a God, he say, may Allah forgive you. What do you think, Muhammad? Is it possible that Allah he is praying to other Allah? What do you think? What kind of God he say, may Allah forgive you? Who is a Muslim when I answer? You see, this is your comment, not me. I did not even choose it. You said it, I pick it. 
If we search in the Quran, we will find your God is Mr. Maybe. Perhaps. He's not sure. And he is asking other Allah to forgive them. To forgive who specifically? Muhammad. So how Allah is God, and then Allah, he says, may Allah forgive you. You see, Jesus, when he spoke, he says, go and your sin is forgiven. Your sin is forgiven. The Jews in their mind, and Jesus can read their mind for his God. They said, who is this person who is forgiven sin? Do you think he's God? Jesus read in their mind, he says, you evil people. Which one is easier to say your sin is forgiven or to say to him, carry your bed and walk? The guy cannot walk. Which one is easier? Here you go. Carry, carry your book and carry your bed and walk. That is Jesus. Your God, he cannot even do any miracle, but yet he's asking other God to forgive the sin of Muhammad. If you don't believe me, open chapter 48, verse number 2. Who is talking? Allah. What Allah is saying? May Allah forgive your sin, Muhammad. So Allah is submitting supplication to who? You see, if the Messiah, he said to the Father, forgive them, Father. Well, this is the Father and this is the Son. The Son asking the Father. The Christian believe in the Trinity. Maybe Allah is the Son of somebody. Allah is saying, and to make it more stupid, he said, may Allah forgive you. So who is the one who made the Quran? Any Muhammadan? If Allah is the one who is making the Quran and He is the author of the Quran, then there is no way Allah will say, May Allah forgive you. Making a wish. And making a wish and putting the name after it. He's not just making a wish, He is saying the name of the person He is making a wish to. Any Muhammadan? That is not from God. God is not. Allah is making a wish to who? To Zakarnai? Christian Prince. First of all, respect yourself. So, Zakarnai, I'm just questioning. First of all, a Muslim cannot quote him. Like, what the heck? I'm not a Muslim. This is why I can question. Christian Prince. I do Allah. If you come to Bangladesh, we are going to cut you three pieces. But if you come to Bangladesh, you will cut me pieces. Uh, if you come to America, we'll make you shish kebab. Christian Prince, first of all, they will not give me a visa. I trained you to give me a visa. And I will come to you. Yeah, come on, Zach or Nike. What visa? Just say two words. You want to do something to the American and they will bring you without visa. Just say it. Go ahead. Be a man. Christian Prince, I'm not stupid. I know what happened to Osama bin Laden. I know the plan. You are going to make me say something and then they will send me and make me feed to the fish. What fish? They will not feed you to the fish. They will feed you to the, to the crap. Like Osama bin Dajin. Do we have any Muhammad in here? Hey Muslims, Allah said to you, may Allah forgive you. How beautiful. And Muhammad now, he heard Allah saying to him, may Allah forgive you. For the past and the future, you know, I mean, is, is, is the person who is making this wish, obviously, he's a scumbag, he's asking for license for sin in the past and the future. Isn't it obvious?
Mayday, mayday. Do we have any Muhammadan? I can be a big time comedian. E? Is that E something special? Is that from the dictionary? Ah, this is from the E dictionary. E. May Allah E you. <laughs> What comedian? The best comedian is Allah. Nobody can. Allah, the best in everything. He created the sperm from the backbone. Women have a sperm coming from the ribs. And that's why I cannot get married. I'm scared. You marry a woman, they lie to us. They say to us they have a breast. They are, those are not the breast. Those are breast testicles. The Quran says so. Women, they have a sperm coming from their boobs. They lie to us, those women. And you know, like, you know, like they are proud. I mean, they are they have big balls, man. I mean, look how big. They scare the hell of you. Some of them they have even balls in the size of watermelon. Not to mention they put uh, I don't know what they pump inside, silicone, rubber, you know, sometimes cucumber, whatever they put in. You know, I mean, whatever in the kitchen, they push it there. Oxygen, air, gas, beans, whatever. And then the men, they look at what they have and they look at the women, what they have. Like, what the heck? We have nothing. The ones we have, like, they are like bim bong, you know, balls. Like, you know, what the heck? Those are the women, they have the balls, according to Allah. This is God. And Zakir Naik, he claimed to be a doctor. <laughs> and, and women, since when women have a sperm, you idiot. <laughs> you know? Oh, boy. <laughs> now we understand why they come from their nipples this white liquid this is not milk <laughs> this is sperm I'm telling you they fool us they lie to us they ejaculate from their nipples they look like nipples because the balls is so big you know I mean the balls is bigger than the thing you know the thing I can't explain to you in more details because most, most of you are not mature at the age of six and over like Aisha Do we have any Muhammadan here? Until now, zero Muhammad texting me. Huh? How can you tell us how it was for you to grow up in a Muslim society? It was fun, actually. I mean, I'm a person who have no mercy in his stupidity. And I used to laugh at Muhammad always. And actually, if you believe it or not, the first one, the first one, uh, there is a, a person, he's a Muslim. He is older than me. One day he said to me something, you know, I'd like I wasn't really, I mean, I'm just, we are so young, but he is like maybe three years older than me. He said to me something I did not understand really, but I think he learned from his father. He said to me, we have faith, but we don't have religion. You Christians have religion, but you don't have faith. And, you know, based on what he said, I answered him. I said, yeah, no, you are wrong. You know, there is people who they are religious and there is people they are not. But the fact most of you Muslims are fake religious. And I told him, isn't it you? You and your family, you claim you fast in Ramadan, but in fact, when we go to your house, you don't fast and you serve us tea and coffee and uh, your mom, she bring us cookies and we eat lunch together in Ramadan. In the street, you go outside, you claim you are fasting, you sit with the Christians, you are eating. So he shut up. But then I thought about it, that he said we have faith, but we don't have religion. You have religion, but you don't have faith. What he is saying to me, that the Christianity is the truth, but there is many Christians don't have faith. And he was saying to me that many Muslims, as he claimed, they have faith, but Islam is a lie. Do we have any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday. How do you do? All right, I'm not going to keep you long. I will keep the video short for today. 
so people they can download it easy and you can call the video Zach and I got busted and I have the link by the way for a tabari in the info so if you copy my video you can post the link there all right the link is in the info down in the info of the video for a tabari just in case so I hope as you see we have no Muslim to call I have my Skype is open hold on I have somebody here hold on Uh, this is not a Muslim. And this is not a Muslim. Oh, this guy from Islamabad? Hold on, Islamabad. Islamabad. I like Islamabad. Hello? 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 Okay. Mr. Islamabad, he didn't want to answer. He didn't want to talk. He answered, but he didn't want to talk. Okay. Uh, we thought we have a fish. Oh, you remind me of the fish, Mr. Zakar Nayak. Do you remember the story of the whale? What about you call me and tell us about the whale? The dead whale who they took him with them in the basket. wheel in the basket and he is a dead whale Ooh. true story brother true story brother prophet moses peace be upon him he said i am the most knowledgeable person between all mankind allah told him shut up moses there is one is more knowledgeable than you moses says what the heck allah you must be kidding he said to him no you know me, I'm very serious, you know? I have many names, one of them is Joe Biden. By the way, what was the topic? Uh, Mr. President, it was about uh, uh, somebody is more knowledgeable than me. Exactly, exactly, yeah, we continue. So yeah, there's uh, somebody more knowledgeable than you. What was the topic? Uh, the topic is just what you just said, what I just said. There's somebody is more knowledgeable than you. So Allah, he, uh, uh, Moses, he asked Allah, where is this guy? Moses, he told by Allah, you take with you a dead whale and put him in the basket. By the way, at that time, whale, they used to be in the size of your hand. I'm telling you. He put, like the Muslim, they translated as a fish. But in Arabic, it says, Hutahuma. You see it? Hut is a whale. <laughs> to make it fit with the story, the hood become a fish anyway you know it's a sardine anyway so so he told him brother you take a dead whale with you and when you lose the whale this is where you will find al khadr and who is al khadr he is a person who drank from the fountain of youth by the way i i drank some that's why i never get old even my mom my mom she is 17 now yeah because you know what happened, my dad, you know, he used to hijack airplanes for living, you know, I mean, not for dying, for living. So like once we hijacked airplane, but those uh, terrorists, American, they shot at the airplane, which we hijacked, mashallah, and uh, the airplane landed in Bahrain. Uh, fell down next to uh, a spring of water. And then uh, my dad, he was like, what? You know, uh, he's thirsty because the airplane was on fire and it was hot, you know. In, the, in Bahrain, it's always icy, at that time at least, you know, now it's not really. Uh, so there's a lot of snow in Bahrain. I mean, it's like Alaska, you know, which is in Brazil. So anyway, like, you know, uh, my mom, she have a very sharp vision. She told my dad, uh, what about you go all the way to Iraq and bring us some uh, water? He said to her, what's wrong with you? There's a water here. Iraq, there's a water, it's just two meters away, you did not see it? Uh, my mom, she said to him, well, Allah made me see farther. It's a miracle. 
Anyway, so Allah, he grabbed some water. He drank from it. I wasn't even born yet. You know, I was in my mother's uh, throat. Not in her stomach. So uh, my mother, she drank water. And because I was in her throat, I drank water too. And since then, I'm very young. And you know it. So when he lost the fish, how they lost the fish? Because they sprinkled some water from the fountain of life. And the dead whale came back to life. And the good whale, like screw, 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 and go in the ocean and uh, swim. Hey, anyone want to call me? Who is a Muslim when I say to me I'm lying? And this is not what the Quran is saying. I mean, we watched the fountain of youth in the Caribbean, uh, the what is it called, the part of the Caribbean. But this is the fountain of youth exists in the story of Galgamesh. Thousands of years ago, Muhammad, he copied it, he put it in his stupid Quran. Any Muhammadan? If you don't believe me, read the Quran or read the interpretation, brother. You can read the interpretation. You can read Ibn Kathir. Do you want to read Ibn Kathir, brother? Let us see Ibn Kathir. Hold on. I was going to go, but you guys made me open a new topic now. What I can do? Bad boys, bad juniors, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? 1821. Okay. 18. This reminds me of my age last year. This year I'm 17. Okay. 18. I don't like this number 18, honestly. This is the time they told me in the like in the police station, if you commit a crime from now on, you go to jail. So I told them, no, from now on, I'm 17. Sorry. You know, like give me a break. <laughs> they think I'm stupid to get 18. I will never do that. So anyway, brother, uh, here you see the interpretation of Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, you don't lie, by the way. Ibn Kathir is a trust Dorsey. You know Dorsey, Bin Laden? He's a trust Dorsey. Ibn Kathir, he explained to us what happened, brother. And, and what happened? What happened? What? Uh, where, where are we? Where are we? Yeah, 18. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm grabbing the wrong... I'm not focusing, sorry. It's 61, not a 21. See, because I don't want to be 21. Honestly, seriously. You know, like, that's not right. Okay, we go to 61. My 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 head is focusing in 17. Sorry, guys. Yeah, okay. Now we go. We go back to order. All right. So here, brother, uh, you see the story explained by Ibn Kathir. He had commanded to carry salted fish, which is a salted too. Not only it's a fish, it's salted. In Arabic, it says whale. Mm. And it had been said to him, when you lose the face, that will be the sign you have reached the place, brother. What a nice GPS. At that time, there's no GPS. You take with you the sardine. When the sardine, you lose it, that's the place. Bingo. That's so good, man. So they set out and traveled until they reached the junction of the two seas. That is Al-Bahrain, the, the country, you know, Al-Bahrain. Where was a spring coal? What the heck? The spring of life. This is where my dad, when they shot him, you know, those American, his airplane, they, he fell down and drunk from there. You see, I'm telling the truth. Many of you, you know, you laugh at my story. Many of you don't believe that we drank from the fountain of youth, the, the spring of life. They went to sleep there. And the fish felt the drip of the water. So it come back to life. The Quran, ya mursi. Fasikh, ya khuya. We have our friends here. They are Egyptian. They are speaking Egyptian. They have a food. It's called fasikh. Fasikh, ya fasikh. Fasikh, fi fasikh. Tabsib wa nasib. لا والله انت سيب اول طب سيب يا عبد اللطيف so the fish felt the drop of the of that water 
so it came back to life. Hey people, any one of you is dying? I still have some drops. In fact, I used it two days ago because my eyes was hurting, so I used from the drop of life spring on my eyes. That's why if you see my eyes, you will not believe it's full of life. You see aquarium there. You see dolphin jumping. I mean, all the fish of the ocean is jumping there. Muslims, is that my story or this is your prophet's story? They found the fountain of life there and some drops of the water like splash on the fish and the fish like woke up like woke, 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 woke. what the heck? I'm alive again? And the fish is salted. <laughs> you can imagine the fish when she got the, like when she got the drops of uh, the spring of life on her. She starts licking the salt. I miss you. I was dead for a long time. What is this? I'm covered by salt. What the heck is that? What is the ocean? And here you notice something very stupid. The fish is next to a spring of water, not next to the ocean. How did she jump to the ocean? Any Muhammadan? The fish is next, next to a spring of water. Okay, we got it. And then some drops of that spring of life fell on it. No problem. Now the fish come to life. No problem. Now how the fish went to the sea? Problem. Now supposedly all oh, this is stupid story is not a problem. The only stupid thing is how they go to the sea. And then, brother, when those sea, when this fish went in the sea, guess what happened, brother? She left with the steps behind her. What? Yes, brother. When Moses and his servant, Mr. Noon, his name is Noon, which means the name of the servant is Noon, which means whale. I mean, it makes sense. The story is about the whale, the servant, his name is whale. I mean, okay, you name it. So it was in the vessel with Yeshua, the Yeshua, the son of Nun. Upon him, be beast. It jumped out of the vessel toward the sea. Look, where is the sea? They are next to the close of a spring of life. I mean, is the sea like it's a balcony? Have you ever heard there is a spring of water right away next to the sea? True story. Yeshua wake up, Yeshua wake up, and fish fell into the water, started to swim through the water, leaving track or a channel behind it. True story. Here's a Quran Ayuka. Brother and sister, this is the Quran. Verify Allah. And this is the book that is not from God. You will find a lot of good written in it. This is the book of God. <laughs> this is the book of God. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm going to do you a favor today. If you want to live, I want you to salt yourself. Ship yourself to me in a basket. I will take you in a journey with me to Bahrain. And there, I will put the basket next to the fountain of life. And then, some water will splash on you. All of you will come back to life and you will look so good. So good. Look at me. Look at me, brother. They don't see you. I mean, how you say to them, look at me. And they cannot see you. What's wrong with you? Okay, I, I will show you. Okay. Uh, this is me after... I got uh, the uh, the splash water on me. Uh, this is a true story, by the way. So handsome, 
beautiful smile, so smart, genius, because this uh, fountain of life will affect your intelligence, you will become genius. Brother, women, they will be fighting over you, even men. I'm telling you, look at this beautiful smile. Faith, wisdom, uh, look at the hair. Look at the eyebrows. So since I got already, try this spring of life. And if you care to get it too, contact me. We accept cash. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, if you speak serious, there's many stupid people will believe it. <laughs> and then brother brother has the fish when she was swimming through the water she was leaving a track is that possible brother the fish in the sea and wherever she swim she leave a track Sound like 60 minute program, right? And then they bring you to eat it, speaking about no God knows what. This is must be from God. Who have an objection? If there is any one of you who have an objection that this is not a book from God, see, Doctor Zakir Naik, nobody has an objection. Thank Allah. Nobody did have a victim. If somebody have a victim, we are going to kill him. Hey, you, you, oh, okay, hold on. What do you mean you are going to kill him if you have an objection? Exactly. Because it is a perfect book. And it is a true story. Actually, me, myself, I saw the track of the fish. You, you, you saw the track of the fish? The Muslims do. Anyone have a comment? Huh? The fish she was leaving track behind because now they want to explain to you how Mr. Moses, the Jewish guy, he was able to find the Khadr because now they will go back to look for the fish or the whale. And now how they can follow it? They have to follow the track. So they go and walk over the water. Moses and his servant, they will walk over the water, which is a tunnel. Because this fish, she left a, a tunnel behind it. And then they keep walking. And keep walking. And keep walking until they arrive in the middle of the ocean. In the middle of the ocean. Look, look here, it says, look. look. Meaning like going through a tunnel on a land. Ibn Juray said, Ibn Abbas said, it left a trace as if it were a rock. <sighs> That's deep. That's so deep. And then, brother, they, like, when they are arriving to a different location, Musa asked his friend, where is the fish we want to eat? Musa says, why you want to eat the fish if this is your only GPS? <laughs> if this is your only GPS, how in the world you want to eat it? Allah told Musa, when you lose the fish, this is where you find the location. And now Musa's want to eat the, the GBS. <laughs> I mean, do you see the story, how strong it is? Muhammad is the best author. The story is so strong. Very strong. Allah told him, when you lose the fish, you will find the location. And now Musa's want to eat the fish. Who is the idiot here? The one who wrote the story? Or Moses? So he told him, listen, listen. Bring us the fish, let us eat, man. We are hungry. Hmm? Uh, and uh, his servant, he said to him, sir, the fish is gone. Like, what the heck? The fish is gone? Where, uh, where the fish? 
He says, do you remember when we betook ourselves to the rock? Indeed, I forget the fish. None but Shaitan, he made me forget to remember it. Huh, here we go, Shaitan. But isn't it Allah's plan? Shaitan, he made him to forget? I thought Allah. And Allah is the made the fish run away. Uh, this You did not forget. Anyway. Uh, so the story, I mean, uh, actually I can't find you the story. Uh, actually here the story in front of us in Arabic. I don't know if they have in the translation for it in English. Yeah, actually here the story here. Let me see if I can find you this hadith. In English in the gang website so I can share it with you okay okay here we go we found a story in English look how long this is story man you will you will spend the night reading it who won the story who won the story this is Al Bukhari, height number 4725. So beautiful story. And you know what? I'm going to continue reading the story for you maybe tomorrow if I if I stay alive because I'm getting younger, you know. So if uh, you know, by the way, one day Christian prince would die, and the Muslim they would say, Allah killed him. Takbir. <laughs> Get lost. I have the fountain of life. Here next to me. Here we go. Hold on. Mm. I drank extra. And that will make me live for the coming 10,000 years. What you can do about it. So next time we go live, maybe we'll talk about this. So we can laugh more at the laughing religion. Those people, they keep talking about preserved religion. Yes, it's a preserved stupidity. And we love that it is preserved. And the Muslim, they say, Prophet Muhammad was the most documented, true fountain of life. You drink from it. And why they call him Al Khadr, by the way? Anyone knows why they call him Al Khadr? Huh? Look, look here, it says, the fish, brother, when they reached the rock, which they both lay their head and slept, the fish, the fish move vigorously. I love the word vigorously. It, this, is the, this is different from Vergason. In the basket and get out into the sea. And there it took away through the sea. Straight, straight. As a tunnel. 1861 Quran. Allah stopped the current of the water on both sides of the way. La freeze it. That's a freeze it. Tick, 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 freezing. You know? And created uh, the track created by the fish, and so the way was like a tunnel. How that how it is a small fish, and now it's a tunnel. There's a track. I mean, is it a fish or a whale? If it's a whale, then we can believe that there is a big track. You see, I mean, you see the stupid lie when they translate this here. It's a fish in Arabic. It says a whale. How little tiny fish is going to make a big track like this, like a tunnel? Have you, so Moses, he go inside the tunnel made by sardine? Are you with me, people? You are not. If this is a small fish, was in the basket. Correct? It was in the basket, right? Okay. So it's a small fish. How this fish, which is a small fish, salted, carried in a basket, make a tunnel enough to fit two men. Yum, yum. You see those fish, sardine? Each one of them can make a tunnel between countries.
I mean, this year was stupid story, but by the way, people read, but they don't notice what I notice. I assure you that if you yourself you read it, you will not notice what I'm saying to you. You know, not everybody is like, let, let us say he squeeze it, you know, like he like think carefully of what the word is saying. Most of the people they just read and you know, just go through, you know, they made a tunnel. But nobody noticed how it's a small fish in a basket. And now this fish is making a track of a tunnel. And then people will go inside the tunnel and there are two men, two growing men. We are not talking about rabbits. Moses was not a rat or a mice. So small fish coming out of the basket, the fish go inside the ocean. Now she is splitting the water, but the split of the water will be based on her size. And now there's a tunnel. And that tunnel is where Solomon and his servant is going to walk through. When Moses got up, his companion forgot to tell him about the fish. So they carried on in their journey during the rest of the day, the whole night, brother. The next morning, Moses asked for the boy, servant, bring us our early meal. I told you, Moses, you want to eat the did you? Allah told him, this is where you find the fish when you lose it. Moses want to eat it. Do you see the stupidity? I mean, a kid who is six years old will not write such a story. How you will find the location by this fish and now you want to eat the fish? Moses is the first person in the world who ate his GPS. And then he said to him, we are tired from yesterday, chapter 18, verse number 62, Quran, brother. And uh, Moses got not tired until he passed in the place where Allah had ordered him to seek after. His boy servant then said to him, do you remember when we, do you remember? Do you remember what I do remember with you? When I took you to the sea, and we both ate barbecue, you pushed me in the water, and you took me in the journey, and then you made me vote for to Bernie. I told you I don't like Bernie Sander. You said to me, Allahu Akbar. Do you remember? Do you remember when we took we, 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 we took we took ourselves to the rock and indeed I forgot the fish none but Satan made me forget the fish okay it took me a course uh, into the sea marvelous way chapter 18 verse number 63 there was a tunnel okay uh, and the fish to the fish and Moses and his boy servant they were astonishment. Like, like you should see the mouth of a, you see those videos in YouTube like reaction I wish I can record Moses in this moment reaction to Moses finding that his fish she uh, you know she took the dish and bye bye you know like take, bye bye you know bye 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 I'm telling you I'm leaving bye bye some water fell on me I became alive again I took the water in the sea and you cannot find me bye 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 I mean, that's so deep, man. That's so beautiful. How many of us feel like kids again? It's the time to remember our childhood. Beautiful story. So Moses, he was feeling the astonishment. Moses says, that what we have been seeking. A second ago, you wanted to eat the fish, you idiot. So when they went back, retracting their footsteps, 1864, they both returned, retracting their steps till they reached the rock. Behold, they found a man covered by the garment. Track of who? Track of the fish. See the story, story here is messed up. A guy covered by a garment. Moses greeted him and he said to him, 
بتوع الخضر السلام عليكم الخضر astonishedly said is there a greeting like this in your land Musa says yes yes I'm Musa's Moshe you know I'm Moshe this is my uh, secretary and then the man Al Khadr he said to him are you Moshe from the children of Israel look 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 this guy is reading newspaper Al Khadr he knew about him right away he told him you are Moshe from the children of Israel you like look at the beautiful moment two prophets of Allah meeting together and by the way in case you do not know what Al Khadr mean Al Khadr mean green why because Mr. Green Al Khadr he drank from that fountain and this is why when he sit on the grass even if the grass is dead and dry or on the sand when he stand up everything underneath of him will be green this is why they call him Al Khadr for he lived forever and he drank from the fountain of life therefore he lived forever he was in the funeral of Noah in the funeral of Moses in the funeral of Aaron in the funeral of Muhammad he was in every funeral okay yeah true story uh, hey, you know Muhammad you know we laugh we laugh at your stupid prophet you know yeah, Jesus, he told us to laugh at your stupid prophet, don't you know? Jesus said uh, to uh, don't even throw the jewels, which is the Bible, under the feet of the swing, you know, the swine, and this is your prophet. So don't tell me, don't, don't lecture me about Jesus. Sit with the fish, stupid idiot, trying to change the topic, and now you want, now you must have to me what Jesus said? You don't even know what Jesus said. You don't even a single word from Jesus in your Quran. Focus with me with the fish. May Allah fish you. Fishy statement from you. Musa said, I have come to you that you may teach me. Ah, now, here is the school. So Al-Khadr is the teacher from now on to Musa's. I cannot tell you the rest of the story. Sorry. I will tell you the rest of the story in other episode. Are we satisfied for today? How many of you in the age of between six and seven give me one and you like the story? If you are between six and seven, give me one. If you are between five and two, give me two. If you are less than six months, give me five. I'm just making a study, you know, to see how many people like Prophet's story, Prophet Muhammad's stories. You know, if there is anyone between one and two years old, you know, okay, five, six, I see a big number between five and six, okay, there's nobody younger than five and six, nobody is, uh... okay, all right, because I'm making a study about who is my audience, sorry, you know, because Aisha, she might be between you, she was horny at the age of six, brother, yes, she have big boobs. Unbelievable, you should see her boobs. Actually, I heard that when the flood of Noah came, Noah himself, he hauled her because her boobs was making him like floating. He did not use any ship. He found like a girl like Aisha at the age of six and her boobs was so big, like a balloon, you know? But then she farted and almost he's drawn. Uh, it's Rafir, he says, the Christians had abandoned me yeah, this is why, you know, I go live after two minutes, I have 700, 800 people watching, including you. <laughs> You're a prophet, he have 70, he have 70, most of them, they are women and slave. <laughs> and the day he die, all of them, they have to slam. <laughs> Anyway, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the time today. Uh, please show respect to Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. He is the best. And uh, uh, I'm so happy that uh, I am able to make you uh, think of Islam seriously. As you see, Prophet Muhammad 
is a person who never tell fairy tale stories. He's truthful. He's a person who share only the truth. How he share it, where he share it from, who care? Sometimes people they tell a story from their bum, sometimes from their nose, sometimes it come like in the form of a booger, sometimes it come from like a diarrhea, but it doesn't matter. Still, as long as it's coming from Prophet Muhammad, it is tasty, not wasty. Remember, Prophet Muhammad he said when he was taking a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage which is stinky, he said water is always pure. And obviously, Muhammad, he was so wet all the night when he made up this story. In fact, he did not make it up. He copied it as usual. Thank you very much for being here. This is your brother, Christian Prince, who was serving you humbly for today. And don't forget to praise the fish, which was in the dish. She said, hish, hish, and she ran away from Mushish. And then Mushesh, he learned after it. And then later he found it. And by the way, he found Mr. Green. And what do you know about Mr. Green? He is the one who sell heroin for all Muslim men. And this is why they are high, very high. Say with me, I mean. See ya.